Hi there, this is Anna from Anna Aspinas Designs. I'm back with a brand new layout deconstruct, which is designed to show you how you can create your own custom photo blends clipping masks using transfers and overlays from Art Play palettes by Anna Aspinas Designs. You can see on my screen I have a layout by creative team member Heather Prince and she has a really interesting digital artistry or scrapbooking style. You can see that it's predominantly traditional in her approach with all of these dimensional elements that she's incorporated into her page that gives it this more traditionally scrapbooked approach. But she then likes to combine her images with those more artsy components. So often she will blend an image into the background and add some transfers as well. And in this particular case, she's also used the transfers from her chosen art play palette to create this neat custom photo blends clipping mask to add a quick and easy blended image to her page. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look and see how this particular layout was put together. So I'm going to minimize this and you can see that we have a solid background foundation with a little bit of artistry in the lower right hand corner. And if we look at our layers panel, this gives us a better view as to how the layers are stacked in order to create the artistry. So she began this page with a 12 by 12 new file at 300 dpi. You want to ensure that you have that 300 dpi as this will ensure that your page will print at excellent quality. She then added a solid paper from Artplay Palette Sonoma, which is the latest Artplay collection available at the Anna Aspinus Design Store at oscraps.com. From here, she added a transfer from the same art play palette to create a focal point on the page and draw the eye in. You'll also notice that the transfer balances with the visual interest that already exists on the solid paper. The next step was to add in her blended photo. And you can see that she has created this mask. And if I go ahead and go to edit fill, we'll ensure that we have the preserve transparency box checked. And I'm going to convert that to black so that we can see it better. And you can see what she's done here is she has layered up multiple transfers from Artplay Palette Sonoma. And then she's merged them together and then she recolored that one layer to white. So let's go and take a look at our transfers and overlays folder, which is in the Artplay Palette Sonoma. And you can see that you have 12 different transfers when you open this file. And so some of them are edge transfers in that they have hard edges to them. But other ones like this one, for example, and this one, even though these are one layer multicolored files, what you can do is you can open one of them into your workspace. And if I go ahead and add this over the top of this black area, even though this is a multicolored file, if I go ahead and go to edit, fill, and then change that color to white, you can see this becomes a really neat element to which you can build your own custom photo blends. And that's exactly what Heather did as she brought in multiple transfers. Let's go ahead and bring this one in, for example. And you want to try and go with those transfers that don't have hard edges. And then you can go to edit, fill, and then white. So you can see by building these up and bringing new transfers in, we're able to create a custom transfer. So let's go ahead and just delete that and delete that one. 
And then what I'm going to do is turn that photo back on so you can see this was her original photo. She placed the image over the top of her custom mask so that the edges of the photo exceed the edges of the underlying transfer. In other words, you don't want to have any of that underlying black area, or in Heather's case, white area, showing beyond the image. So you want to completely extend the photo edges over the mask, and then you're going to go to Layer, Create Clipping Mask, and you can see how that instantly blends the photo into her background. She then added some elements from the ornate cuts number one, which includes a variety of elements and frames. Let's go ahead and take a peek at some of those. So here's the preview and you can see that they are dimensional elements and I've included the layers for each one of these elements in a different folder. So let's go into number one, for example, you can see you have the PSD file which will open in your version of Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. And then I've also provided those layers individually for those that are working in other software programs. So we have a drop shadow layer, we have a paper layer, and then we have the ornate layer. So you could use these layers independently if you want to, or you can layer them up to create the element of your choice. And the beauty of having these layered files is that it allows you to manipulate each of the layers individually to customize your page. So there's a number of these different elements available to you in the ornate cuts number one. And then I've also included those ornate files. So that's the third option in each one of these layers as an ABR file. So let's go ahead and you can see that we have the ABR file here and that can be loaded into your Photoshop or Elements program and then you can access those files using the paintbrush tool. So let's head back to our layout and you can see in this case Heather used the elements in their traditional format. So she merged the layers together and I like how she's used this interesting piece to decorate the top edge of her layout and then she has balanced that by adding the frame so you can see how we've got this nice sort of visual triangle coming around which draws the eye to our focal point there is a mask layer that comes with the frame and then she clipped a photo to that mask layer using the same clipping mask function that she used to add the photo to her blended clipping mask. She then wanted to embellish her page and so she did this by adding some transfers and I really like how she brought in some of these edge transfers and she's added an artsy component to these transfers by applying different blending modes. Now the default blending mode for any of these layers is normal so you can see that this is what the transfer would look like if I were to bring it directly onto the layout. But you can go ahead and you can change the properties of that transfer simply by checking different options from this drop down menu. And in this case, she decided to add some punch to her transfer by adding this linear light. You can see how the colors are accentuated. She then duplicated that transfer to create a secondary layer and then she applied a multiply blending mode. So again, this would be the normal blending mode. It looks like she has a square attached to that, but of course when you apply different blending modes that will disappear. So you can go ahead and experiment with different options there as well. In this case she went with multiply, so you can see the difference that that creates. So you can change the look of the transfers and overlays that come in Art Play palettes simply by changing each of the blending modes. She then added another transfer, the lace, and what that does is it extends the lace down over the transfer and applied a drop shadow layer style to give the elements and dimensions. You can see if I turn off that visibility, then the drop shadow layer style 
is activated and deactivated. She then brought in some multimedia files and these are layered element files and they come in PSD and individual formats. Let's go ahead and switch that on and you can see that essentially these are artsy element clusters that I've created for you to add to your pages. And the nice thing about these layered files is that you can turn off any of the layers that you want in order to customize the elements. If I wanted to remove that leaf, I could. If I wanted to remove the tape, I could do that too. So lots of different options to be able to switch up and change the element. You can also change the color. So for example, if I wanted to change the color of the leaf, then I would access that green leaf and then go to image adjustments, hue and saturation, and I could change the hue of that leaf and make it brown or blue, for example. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of that. And before we move along with the page, we'll just go ahead and take a quick peek at some of the other elements that I included with this set. So this was the one that Heather chose to add to her page. There are three others, and these are also included in their individual folders. And if you head into one of those folders, you can see that there is a PSD file and then all of the layers in that PSD file are also included as individual layers so that you can create your own custom element clusters. So let's head back to the layout and then she went ahead and she applied another transfer just to counteract the visual artistry that's happening on the left hand side of the page it creates balance and again it strengthens that visual triangle that draws the eye around her focal point she then added her words over the top of her photo and converted those to white you'll notice that most of the word art that i supply is delivered in png black format but there's also an ebr file to which you can add that word art to your page in any color of your choice. And then she dipped into the Urban Threads 17 that were released a few weeks ago, and she added a couple of those to her page. So she adhered that element to the top of the page, and I like how those curved organic lines lead the eye down to her focal point and to the words. And then she also has a mirroring element that draws the eye diagonally through her page to the bottom left hand corner. So a super simple page here that Heather has created, very effective but very simple. And the basis of it really is around the combination of multiple transfers in order to blend that photo into her page with the addition of some simple embellishment and words. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Again, all products used are available in the Anna Aspinus Design Store at O Scraps. They're part of the Artplay Palette Sonoma Collection. And if you have any questions about this tutorial, then please don't hesitate to contact me. You can reach me at Anna at AnnaAspinusDesigns.com and I look forward to being back in the space again soon. Take care and have fun creating in Photoshop.